Lost Epoch currently has a 9 out of 10 rating on Steam, with 93% of those players liking the game. So if you're looking for our ARPG, this might be the fun and exciting title that you're looking for. Now, this is still in beta with early access on the PC, and tons of changes are still being made very often. They most recently added a third mastery for the mage class, which is the main class that you're seeing here. It's called the Rune Master, however I'll be building this character as a sorcerer because it'll better fit the build I have in mind. The build that I'm working on uses shields, or wards to protect itself from incoming damage while teleporting around to gain damage buffs, and then spams Elemental Nova, which deals fire, lightning, and cold damage all at once. Now, this can be drastically different than an Elementalist you make, because you can enhance the spells or cater them to your liking, making tons of room for build diversity, which is a very welcome change from some of the other titles I've played in this genre. In fact, you can pick 5 spells to specialize in this way, and then within them, there are different paths and various skill trees you can work with. On top of that, your character also has a passive skill tree that you can build up while leveling, assigning points in various ways to boost your character and synergize with the skills that you've been altering as well. Here I'm putting some points into teleport, and I'm going for some additional wards which unlock several pathways to more survivability nodes as well, and I plan on taking advantage of those later, but for the time being I want to go after the damage boost provided after casting teleport. This will also unlock some additional novas that will cast as I use enough points to open the connections. I'll definitely be making build videos as well as I continue to level up, because this game already has me hooked after just several hours of playing. As mentioned, there's also the passive skill tree, which can be used to boost damage, reduce cooldowns, add crowd control, and more. And this you gain points for as you level up. The combination of which spells or abilities that you select, alter, and ultimately enhance is just incredibly open in this game. There's five playable classes currently in the game, with three mastery choices each. These are choices like Rune Master and Elementalist that we mentioned already, both of which are options for the mage, so not only can you be an altaholic, but there's tons of replayability for vastly different runs through the game's main story. However, if you're the type of player that prefers endgame, well, that's already out in the beta as well. But unfortunately, I haven't reached it yet personally, so you have to give me a week or so in order to make a separate video covering that portion of the game when possible. The biggest criticism I have so far is that the game felt absolutely terrible on controller, and I've got a brand new controller to review which I was excited to talk about as well, however we're going to save that for another day, and I'd rather not show the gameplay of me using the controller because again, with this title being in beta, it can definitely see improvements before the official launch, so let's give them the benefit of the doubt there. Bosses all have unique mechanics, making them enjoyable and keeping you focused on the screen rather than just plowing through everything that comes your way. Being an ARPG, there's of course loot and varying degrees of quality for it with easy to compare options, but you'll still want a game plan when selecting your loot, since there are about a hundred different stats like crit chance, crit damage, spell damage, cast speed, move speed, armor, and so on. Like I said, stats, and tons of them, with some new and interesting ones like ward retention mixed among more familiar ones like resistance and block. This game seems to pull the best ideas from various titles like Diablo, Torchlight, and Path of Exile, putting them all in one place for your enjoyment. There's an idle system as well that lets you equip idols, provided you can fit them into the grid that you've unlocked for more power-ups. There's a fast travel system, which quickly allows you to move from one area to another. And there's no long, unnecessary walks between quests, with objectives that can easily be seen from both the world map and minimap, which can be toggled from the upper right to an overlay depending on your preference. Taking a look at a quest now, and the location of our objective can be seen as soon as we zone in, and we aren't running around aimlessly for minutes on end. There's a big difference in my opinion between ARPG and CRPG when it comes to what most players are looking for from quests and even the main story experience. Here we fight through some hordes of monsters with a small handful of more powerful ones towards the end, scoop up any worthwhile loot along the way, gather the objective, and go back to hand it in. It's perfect. The combat is rewarding as well, with really a limited number of health potions for burst healing, you need to manage cooldowns, positioning, and your regen against not only the bosses but elite mobs, making you feel like you earn your loot as opposed to just farming the same dungeon or zone over and over while multitasking in real life. After interacting with the quest objective, it's a wrap. Go back and claim your reward. That easy. Overall, I really like this game so far. Even though it doesn't really do anything new or different to other titles in this genre, it does seem to be a hybrid of all the best features that they have to offer. My favorite part is the truly unique and diverse bosses, making each one feel like it got the attention that it deserves. I'm definitely looking forward to reaching the end game over the next week or so as well, just to see what that has to offer. But regardless, I feel the game is worth a playthrough, perhaps more, just to have some fun in the main story with different builds and classes. 
This game is a one-time purchase, which I got on Steam for anyone who's interested, and I first saw this game showcased from a Diablo 2 streamer over a year ago, but the game wasn't nearly as developed as it is now, so I'm glad I waited, and you'll have to decide if you want to try it in beta or wait for launch. This fight was really fun. The mechanics did a great job of making me unable to focus fire one of the targets. It'll be interesting to do it on another build at a later date. As mentioned, I'll certainly be adding some more videos for this title on the channel over time, as I continue to level, gain more legendary items, experiment, and test builds. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.